Well, let's go ahead and um, I want to formally welcome everyone to Entrepreneur, the podcast for Wizards of Eyes. Um, I want to introduce myself. I'm Perry Brill here with my co-host, uh, Dr. Raymond Brill. Hello. How's it going, guys? Good. Um, so Entrepreneur, we, we call ourselves the podcast for Wizards of Eyes. And the gentlemen we have on here today are, are truly wizards. What is a wizard, Dr. Brill? Uh, these are people that you may know or may not know who are pillars of the industry. Sometimes we are people behind the scenes that you never hear about. And they're what makes the industry tick. So they're the experts in the exam lanes, in the laboratories, in the operatories. These are people that we're bringing to light who make a difference, who help us run our practices and opticals in a much better way and have a lot to say. And they've been influential, but you may not have heard about them. So we hope that everyone that listens here will become a wizard. Right. And you know, the whole purpose of entrepreneur is to, to, we're not doom and gloom. There is a ton of opportunity out there. And the whole podcast today is going to be about optical opportunity. It is one of the things we ignore in the industry. We talk a lot about medical and equipment, but optical for many of us is where, um, you know, we're, where we make our livelihoods. Yes. And I would say that, you know, I've been attending five, six, seven <laughs> Zoom or webinars a day. So uh, it's kind of interesting. And my latest one at night was at 11 o'clock at night from uh, Australia. So, Perry. Um, all right. So, so we often will have meetings about uh, medical things, but we rarely have meetings about or classes about refraction, for example. Or we hardly ever have classes about lenses, frames, the, and the lab. And part of the lab is um, that's really where you make your money. So, and you could, and nowadays where everything is pretty high cost, uh, there's a considerable amount of way that you could work smarter and not harder by uh, changing up operations. And today we're going to have uh, some guests here and see if everybody's still visible. Okay, so. Jason Barr, he is the senior IOF representative, that's in office finishing representative, and he is an ABOC, and he's with Santinelli, and he will be giving us insights on how to make money in the, by doing your own lab work. And along that same uh, measure here, we have Hugh McManus, and he's the manager of operations for Fast Grind, also known as Super Optical. Uh, and John Corsini, John Corsini's president of Fast Grinds Super Optical. So we're Fantastic. looking forward to a very lively discussion here. And we will have questions uh, that you can uh, ask us through the chat or the Q&A. Uh, well, thanks for the introduction there, Dr. Brill. Um, I want to let you know that this is not a sponsored podcast. Santinelli, um, Super Optical, we did not pay them to be here. We're um, having these. They didn't pay on. us either. They didn't pay us either. They didn't pay us either. Uh, the reason we have them on is they're highly qualified to be talking about this subject matter. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are just in sales and all they know is sales. But these gentlemen here, they know the technical side, they know the marketing and the money side behind it. And that's why they're here. So, uh, Dr. Brill, thanks for funding the Entrepreneur Podcast with your credit card. It's been my pleasure over the last uh, over a year now. We've had about what about 95 podcasts and videos and skits that we've done. So on all sorts of topics, and it's been a, it's been a pleasure. Um, sponsor number two is is myself here. Uh, I have a consulting business called iRocket.com. You can go check it out, and uh, I provide on-site optometry consulting um, from a, a more techie millennial side. I'm all about speed and accuracy. Uh, and finding creative ways to survive in business. Um, so go check out my website. Really, I clean up operational uh, inefficiencies, bring technology in, less, become less reliant on staff members. Um, let's see here. So during this live feed here, um, I know many of you are going to be really interested in adopting some of this technology, and we're going to use kind of this collective effort 
uh, to do some group purchasing here. Um, a lot of you probably belong to some great alliances and buying groups. Uh, but today on this, this live feed here, we want to get some of the people who are really serious about making transformational changes in their practice. And potentially, if we can get enough people here together, uh, these gentlemen have all agreed to offer us some type of preferred pricing. So right now, um, I'm sure everyone has their phone sitting right next to them, next to their hip. If you are at all interested in learning how to edge, or maybe you're edging, or you wanna learn how to do some surfacing uh, inside your, your practice, text this keyword, edge, to that number, and um, we'll send you a quick form. You don't have to fill it out now. Fill it out after the podcast. So I'm gonna leave this up here just for a minute. Um, well, tell us, where, where are you located, Hugh? Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Perfect. Jason? I'm in South Central Michigan. John? Cincinnati, Ohio. And Dr. Brill, where are you? I'm in Kansas City. Go Chiefs. On the Kansas side, yeah. But not Kansas City, Kansas, so. Right, all right. Uh, getting a lot of messages coming in, so um, we're gonna have a lot of details here and we'll make sure we get you that information. All right. Um, I just want to, before we hop into the podcast, we're covering lenses right now in lens production. On Thursday, uh, we're going to be covering how to create your own frame line in your practice. You could call it white label, private label, whatever you want. But if you've always dreamed of creating a frame line for your practice, put your name on it. And you can buy it at a fraction of the cost. Um, we're going to be doing that. So you can literally choose what we're going to be discussing is how you can order glasses from Italy, France, Germany, China, whatever country you want. We have put together the resources to do that uh, through American agents. You don't have to know Mandarin. Um, you don't have to know uh, German. I know Dr. Burrell, you just know a few words. Yeah, I know. I know a little bit more. I was born uh, there. You don't have to, or you don't have to also buy 600 of every frame. And that's going to be important. So we kind of, we're trying to consolidate here and cut out what I would call the middleman or what Warby Parker, well, Warby Parker calls optometrists the middleman, but um, we'll call it cutting out the middleman. Right. Or so if, if you call, if you're going to get invited, them. we're going to send a big email out about the, how to get your own custom frame line in your office. Um, if you want to get notified about that webinar, uh, to that same phone number, text the keyword private. And, um, Basically, we'll just set you up with the resources to create your own frame line. Um, remember, these are frames are at a fraction of the cost. So you might be paying $30 for a frame you generally be paying $100 for. Okay, Perry. Well, why don't we get into this here? Sounds good. And um, All right. So here we are, Brady Bunch style. And... We are going to, why don't we have each one in, in kind of introduce himself and say what they do at their company. So Jason, you want to start us out? Sure. Hey, thanks, Dr. Brill. I um, want to thank you and Perry first for putting on these webinars. And it's great seeing how far Entrepreneur has come since last year when you launched at Expo in Times Square. Um, yeah. I saw you then and I'm really happy to be part of this. Santinelli's happy to be part of this right now. Um, I'm a licensed optician. I got started in this industry in 1996. Uh, working in a lab and progressed into working from grunt work, cleaning phones, filling fax machines, telemarketing, uh, into another facility doing some of the premium edging. And I found that I really liked it and I was really good at it and figuring out ways to uh, manage the frame and lens marriage in a way where the quality was key, customers were happy, but also the relationship side I loved. So I became a rep going out then and calling on these customers um, 2005, I was moved out to Michigan as part of a recruitment opportunity, took over the territory for Santinelli, uh, managing Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio, and really take a lot of pride in make, making sense of an edger, you know, just as the catalyst to doing so many things for practice. And, and, and my gospel is really, why aren't more doctors doing it? And usually what I find is that it's fear of the unknown. It's a mystery when they get out of school that they weren't taught a lot of edging. Um, and I 
you know, working with Santinelli is great because we have such a good presence and I'm happy to be here today and we'll answer some questions. And go ahead, Hugh, uh, tell us your background um, in the industry. Sure, so I started with Super Optical in 2012 uh, in their marketing department and have since transitioned to the manager of operations and just do general operations, but I also work very closely mm -hmm. with all of our customers to make sure that mm -hmm. the quality that they're receiving from our lenses mm -hmm. is where it needs to be, as well as that the machine's mm -hmm. performing mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John, you want to introduce mm -hmm. yourself? Yeah, well, John Corsini. Um, I've been in the industry now for 25 years and have worked with uh, Super Optical and Fast Grind to uh, enable ECPs to become more self-reliant and to save uh, a lot of money on their, their lab bills, make more profit, and to be able to offer exceptional customer service. And we're proud to be in over 50 countries around the world almost every state in the U.S. and we're also utilized by the U.S. military. So um, it's been great being part of this industry. A lot of you uh, that are on this podcast, I'm sure I've seen you or you've seen me at the, the shows all around and uh, welcome. I hope everybody is keeping safe and I hope you find this very informative. Well, John mentioned something called profit, but uh, <laughs> Is that okay to make? I mean, aren't we supposed to just pass along all the savings to our patients and be really nice guys and gals? I mean, I, I always thought that if you can get something cheaper, you just pass along the profit to the, that you would normally make to patients. I mean, if I could buy a, a, hundred, a frame that would wholesale for $100 and sell for $300, if I could buy that one, uh, so it's on a good guy, discount for $10. Aren't I supposed to sell that for $30? I mean, it's a three time markup. So correct me if I'm wrong on that, gentlemen. I mean, same thing for those big optical lenses that would wholesale for now $300, $350. Um, I mean, is, is it moral to, to make them for $30 and make profit on it? Or should I just lower, lower the cost to the patient to maybe just $100? No. I'm not sure it's moral to sell them for $350 because the actual cost is quite a bit less. It's just when you're buying from the lab, there's a, quite a huge markup. So the nice thing about being able to do in-office processing, both surfacing and edging, is you can control your cost. You can give a good discount to your customers, but your margins are going to be greater. So the nice thing is you're going to be making more money but you're going to be selling it to your customer for less than what you're doing now. So we're the same. being a good guy and you're making money at the same time. Okay. So it's, it's, it's American still to make money, right? Yes. Okay. So I think, uh, John, you brought up a good point. Um, when you're getting that $350 lab bill, not only are you paying for that material cost, which is probably pretty low, you're paying for their marketing team, their brochures, the fuel that rep is um, using, there's a lot of overhead. The donuts, the, donuts, the, the expo parties, <laughs> the, the knickknacks. So um, I well, wanna, first, first I want to get a poll. I've got a poll. I just want to know who's edging. So here, does that sound good? Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, All let's right. do it. We're going to take it's a very poll. Very edgy everybody. question, Perry. It's very edgy. All right. Can everybody see this? Yep. All right. So we're going to wait for these answers to come in. Pretty easy. Well, that's going on. Um, you know, Dr. Brill, I heard you mention frame and my, my take on that is, is when you incorporate in office finishing, there are many different benefits that come alive with just that one investment in the equipment. One of those that I love to promote is making your own frame and lens package, which you own yourself in your practice. It could be a complement to frame lines, which you already have that then have even, they have models that are being discontinued. If you have an edger, you can keep those frames you can bundle them with lenses and create your own frame and lens package instead of being a, a locked in distributor for the same old frame and lens package from a lab that everybody else is doing. Um, I mean, I could take last season's mo model frames and 
And yeah, like, uh, like, like, like we talked about, yeah, I'm glad you like that. I, I call it last season's collection. I wouldn't use the word close out or discontinued. It's just a merchandising thing. But uh, when you have an edger, you have ability to, to, to process your own lenses in office. You can, that stale inventory can mean something to your patients, um, which means something to your business. Instead of just sitting in a drawer for that temple that you might need in the future, um, you know, you can, you can actually release those and sell them to your private pay patients and it, and it works very well, you know, on the frame side of things. Yeah, so that, right. makes, that makes a total amount of sense there. And, and, I, and, not and, I will, and I will say that um, while we're waiting for the tally of the poll here, I will say that it came to me as a surprise when I first started edging back in the late 80s, 1980s. <laughs> uh, so I have found that there were different types of accounts because I was just a full service account and I'd hired uh, mm -hmm. a, a lab man who would come in the evening and he would do my edging. And he worked for one of the labs and I was ordering lenses on the full service price list. I said, what do you mean? It, there's, there's a different price list? He said, yeah, you need to be ordering them on the uncut price list. So I was seeing this full service price list and it had deduct seven, you know, deduct $7 for, uh, for edging. Uh, and then he, cause he, then the optometrist thinks, God, for seven bucks, I'm let them edge it, you know? But there's, there's uncut accounts and there's edge only accounts and there's unlimited amount of price lists that you have uh, that were unbeknownst to me, uh, just a, you know, a new practitioner. So John, tell, tell us a little bit about the price list war there. On the lens side. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's and the why? beauty of uh, controlling the lenses in office. You know, if you're actually producing them, you can uh, just to add on to what Jason's talking about, you can private label those lenses. So you can have your own brand. Uh, you, you're, have it, you're producing a premium lens as good as anything that's coming out of the big box opticals and uh, but you could sell it for less and um, you know you you can you can sell it as a, a lead-in if you're competing with a Costco or somebody else or you can sell it as as a high-end because it works both you're paying less for the lens so you can sell it for less where you need to you're you have a premium lens a premium AR coating so you can get a good dollar for it uh, on the other end too. So it, it really depends on what your market is, but if you're controlling your lens production, you can compete in whatever market you need to. Yeah, I wanna share the poll results here. Um, so just to let everyone know, we have 169 attendees on here, 70% um, of you voted. So uh, let's share these poll results. All right, can everybody see them? Yep. All right, so about um, six, about, about half are edging and half aren't. So uh, for that, for all you out there that are not edging, this is your number one opportunity to make money when you get back. No, it's not the, the mon that PPP money that you got or the unemployment. It's not going to get you very far. Um, it's going to be uh, in-office edging, in-office surfacing. Um, the, next, the next thing people do is just follow what we say, Perry. That's pretty dangerous. I know. You got like a little cult cult following here. <laughs> I know. I better not give bad advice. What I'm seeing here is it's, it's about 50% edging versus not edging. And that's really the industry standard. That's kind of where it's been just up and down a little bit for probably the past, I don't know, 20, 30 years. Um, it, it's just to what level of edging, you know, do they just have an old edger in the back or do they really have a fluent in office finishing model where they understand the better buying opportunities of, of lenses, uh, where they really understand how to leverage it for cus you know, customer service and getting patients happier more often. Um, yeah, so the way it works is these, these lenses, when they're born from big optical, they don't come out with a name on them. They don't have like a marketing name. In fact, labs call them pucks. We call them like a hockey puck. And they look like a puck. <laughs> so they, they have attributes put onto them by big optical and by, yeah, there's a puck right there by big optical and, uh, and that, all that marketing, you pay a, a lot for that marketing. Uh, so we're not disparaging the big optical. They, they have their place, but if you want to be, uh, me more profitable, then you could put your own name on that lens. I mean, it's not born with some 
the letter to start with a V or you know a P or anything else like that. So be smarter about it. Nobody really knows. Nobody cares about what type of lens that they have. I mean, when I go to the dentist, I don't ask him what type of amalgam is he, he's using, uh, or what type of gloves or soap or anything like that. So these are a part of our trade secrets and make the most of it and help yourself be more profitable. I know right. when my friends say, hey, you've been busy? I think you should be asking me, have you been profitable? Everybody's busy. So. All right, I wanna move into the, the next phase here. So we're really here to do a lot of questions and answers live. That's why I've assembled these team of experts. So um, I want Jason to give advice to one of you in the audience. Uh, if you're new to edging, you have no clue where to start, Jason is here to answer your questions. Are you ready, Jason? Are you hyped? I'm ready. All right, so I'm gonna get one of you live on here to ask Jason a question face-to-face. -face. So um, put it in the chat that you wanna be on. And Why don't you call me Catherine Calabar? She has, or I mean, uh, An here, Angie uh, Cervantes. She's got a question. What's the best blue blocker lens compared? Well, we'll, no, we'll no. get into that later. That's a little- the first one. Her, she asked the first question there. Oh. What Let's about have premium lenses? Let's tap. Can you put her on there? Angie, are you able to be seen? Can you add her to the panel? Yep, I'll get her on the panel here. So, well, that's being said, I see Anissa here at the very bottom, and, and she says, you know, that um, fears having to hire somebody just to edge. And my position is if you do, it's a great problem to have. Um, the added efficiency that an edger will deliver, the personnel that you currently have in your practice, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to um, edge that job instead of wrapping it up with a frame to come, sending it out to a lab, and then waiting in limbo when they could have realistically had those lenses delivered tomorrow by noon, popped them in an edger, five minutes, 10 minutes later, they've got the job ready, they're calling the patient, uh, and they're the hero. Um, you know, very rarely will I tell a doctor or ECP that you need to hire somebody new. Typically it's the exercise of delegation, identifying that staff member that would be a good fit. But also now with the edgers being so easy to run, it's the cross-functional um, training. I mean, they're all, they're all learning how to run the edgers. So they, you know, it's the redundancy if the staff has to be sick or something, but the days of having that Oz behind the curtain turning dials and the only person that knows how to run that mystery machine in the back those days are really over with today's technology. And so um, with the added efficiencies, I would say most often, no, unless you've waited way too long to buy an edger, you don't need to hire somebody just to run it. And if you did, it's a great problem for your practice. The same is true for fast grind at that point where any, anyone in the optical is gonna be able to run it. And we encourage uh, you know, cross training for, for that type of technology. So there's, there's no real concern for that, and when you pair a fast grind with an edger, it just accelerates those savings even even further. Hey, right, we got a few panelists on here. So uh, we have Dr. Klepfitz and uh, Dr. Shaw will be joining us. And uh, let's see who else we can get in here. Are we going to put anybody on here to ask? Yeah, Dr. Klepfitz, how you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Uh, ask a question. What's going on? So I've got a small space in a downtown area, literally a 10 foot wide closet with a cabinet. I have drainage, I have water hookups. I like to use premium products only, um, the best I can get for my patients. We're trying to get into more cash pay. What do I need to get up and running? How much space do I need? You know, can I get these premium lenses for a low cost? Well, uh, maybe I'll take that. So it, at the moment, you're not edging or doing any lab work. Nothing. So depending on your space, it doesn't require much, certainly, to do the edging. Uh, fast grind takes up about the same amount of space as an edger. So if uh, what size is your closet, <laughs> your room? About 10 feet wide, 5 feet deep. Okay, that, that really is perfect. If you have a 10-foot run, uh, you could fit all your equipment in there, the edger, fast grind next to it. Um, and then you now have the ability to do a premium progressive with AR coatings. You can offer same day service so that you can get paid immediately and don't have to wait. Um, 
and your payback can be very, very quick. Uh, you know, where you could do a premium progressive with AR coding uh, for about uh, $25 instead of 150. So you do uh, one or two of those a day and your, your payback is, is very, very quick. And I, and I did see Mark in the uh, question and answer section. I think he's got a, a six by nine space for a lab and was wondering if, if that's enough space as well. And we have fit into smaller than 10 foot runs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, gentle, gentlemen, how big, Jason, how big is an edger? Uh, 20, it, it's, it, it'll fit on a standard table. Uh, it's 22 inches deep, 19 and a half inches wide as an average with our platforms uh, and about 14 and a half inches high. So it will fit under a cabinet, which is really the biggest uh, concern if I'm installing is making sure that, you know, you've got open space. You can lift the lid and it just makes it more comfortable to run it. Uh, but just a standard table and in terms of linear feet, I've got edgers on a butcher block with cast wheels on the bottom. Doctor puts it in a closet during the day, and at night he pulls it out and plugs it in and edges all his jobs for the next day. I mean, you don't need a lot of space. Then, you know, back in the day, you definitely did because there was all these different ancillary steps after edging. And with today's in full integration of, of technology, you don't need to have a groover, a polisher, a handstone, you know, it's it, it, so it's much more integrated, um, complete functionality from start to finish. They don't have to babysit the machine. It, before they would have to wait, the lens would come out and then they would chain for it. They would put the safety bevel on, groove it, polish it. Um, and today it's just not like that. So you can get away with a lot less space, but also the noise factor. Today's systems are direct drive, much quieter. They don't sound like a Sherman tank coming through the wall. Um, than ever they were in years past. So, you know, with today's technology, it makes it easier to fit an edger in a smaller space um, without it being so noisy that it's uh, abruptive. The, the, yeah. other, the other thing that I'll just tack on right at the end is the water supply, that there are systems that uh, we have on recirculating water supply now. So you really just need electric. And I, it sounded like, Jason, that you're... 10 foot run had plumbing all ready for it, but just for the others that are listening in, wondering if their space would allow for an in-house lab, uh, plumbing isn't even a requirement. It's a nice to have, don't get me wrong, but electric is, is really the only requirement now. On the edger front, view you're right. On the edger front, it's, it's a dedicated line is always best. Yeah. If you've already got, uh, Dr. Jason, if you've already got the plumbing, the cold water supply and a drain tapped in, definitely take it to the next step and allow whatever edger company you choose to go with direct water because then you always have the fresh water running through the instrument instead of it recirculating through a, a pump system um, so that the lens debris doesn't create uh, more of a routine maintenance situation. Direct water is definitely better. So let's move on. I want to get a, a female perspective, uh, Janelle. Um, how are you doing, Janelle? Where are you? Good, how are you? So I'm located in Marietta, Georgia, and I'm in the process of relocating, relocating my practice in a couple months, and I want to be able to have um, an office edging. Some of the questions were answered already with you guys that if I had to have a separate blocking system, I see a lot of the systems come already handy with those things. And I kind of want to get an average um, investment on my end for um, full surfacing versus just getting a um, small finishing edger, what will be recommended? Well, I guess I'll take that since we're in the surfacing business, but um, really what we're offering with Fast Grind, and maybe a lot of people aren't aware out there exactly what it is, but it's actually modified surfacing. So it's a surfacing machine that's made for the ECPs for this small optical because it's just one machine and it will generate fine and polish progressives, bifocal, single vision, AR coatings, uh, you know, photochromic lenses, mirrored lenses, everything that you need, but you don't need what you would consider full surface, which is probably about 10 pieces of equipment, which requires a very large space and a skilled operator. So the modified surfacing now makes it very feasible for any optical 
to start producing their own premium progressives. The investment is very small. It's actually less than an edger. And the skill level required is, is almost none. Uh, the system is, um, is run by software that steps anyone through the process. So um, now you have the ability to, when you put in a lab, to have full surface or surfacing capability and a full lab capability with edging so that you're controlling your supply, you're saving a lot more money, and uh, your service uh, is, it will be exceptional. Wait. And in today's environment, sorry, Perry, but in today's okay. environment, service is, is so key because people are used to Amazons and just everything, getting everything immediately. So now more than ever, uh, quick service is, is paramount. Yeah, I want to do a little um, live demonstration here. We have Hugh, who's going to show you what a, um, a surfacing lens looks like with the fast grind system. Um, right. So uh, again, just to piggyback on what John was talking about, a, a traditional surfacing, you start with, as Dr. Brill referred to it earlier, a puck. So this is a raw semi-finished lens. And the goal is to turn this into a finished progressive. So that would be ready to go on any Santinelli edger that uh, you have to mount into the glasses. What Fast Grind does is we've already taken eight of the 10 steps that you're going to use before you ever receive the lens. So there's already been a considerable amount of work done to this product. And what will come out here is a digitally enhanced progressive with AR, but it's already been blocked, taped, generated, and just using a simple four pad step, you're able to create and finish uh, progressives in house. In hey, less than 15 minutes. I'd like to take a, a minute and answer kind of a trifecta of questions here. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing Brandon Cornish, he's only comfortable with single vision. Uh, what's the best way to make the move to edging all jobs? I would say, to answer that question succinctly, Brandon, the edger does not know that it's a progressive lens. That's simply an exercise of blocking, your layout blocking. So understanding the major reference point on how that, that progressive is going to block relative to the laser marks and the fitting cross, that'd be a good start. And any of your you know, edger companies can assist you with that, hopefully. And uh, you can always email me too, and I've got tools that can help you with that. Uh, but you should be edging as much as you can. If you're going to edge anything just primarily, it would be the single vision. And that's because of the opportunity to, to purchase lenses in a bag. It's so quick. And that's going to be the segue into the answering the question here. Um, Brandon, Brandon, do you want to speak to the Jason here? You're live. Hey, Brandon. Hey, there, man. <laughs> Um, no, just, uh, he hit my point, and that was actually a good way to put it in. Um, super comfortable with, uh, going ahead with the single vision, and I think if we don't get there, we can do that probably two and a half, you know? Um, just been very shy about going with the progressives. Mostly, don't want to mess something up that costs more, uh, not for it. Uh, I do it myself. I have, uh, uh, one license application, one down in my office, so I'll help out with that. Um, but just trying to look for a way to get more comfortable if there were, uh, Edging for dummy, quick cheat codes, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, I'll, text, I'll text down here my cell phone number you, or my email address, Brandon. I'll help you offline. No problem. It's, it's not nearly Perfect. as hard as you think. But I know it's the fear of ruining an expensive lens, right? Oh, um, yeah. If you're not ruining... It's the purpose. You're trying to save money, you're trying to make money, and you don't want to be messing up more expensive lenses. I'll Brandon, tell you, I'll, if I'll you're not ruining single vision lenses... If your single vision jobs are coming out fine, meaning your axis settings and everything in your edger are good, your sizing is good, um, the edger does not know it's a progressive lens. It knows the material, whether it's a bevel or flat with a groove and polished or not. So those are some things to consider. The edger doesn't know that that lens was $200 or $2. It just, it, um, and I'll, 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 I'll text you. <laughs> I'm going to, hey, hey, Brandon, um, yeah. you, the benefit of edging is you can really control your cost. So there's really no reason to buy a $200 progressive lens unless it's a 174 um, lens with, you know, AR and a mirror. Um, so there's, we all have to control our cost. And there, there's really, Dr. Bell hinted at this earlier, 
there's a zillion different price lists. You just got to be adamant you're getting the right one. And don't rely on any buying group or alliance group to help you. They're in it to make money as well. I was going to chime in too. So where you make the money is on your progressives. Okay. That's where you're going to make your money. And because um, you're going to save money on that. And, you know, if, if we have a tough job, let's say it's got a big curve on it or a sharp angle, you know, you always can run a dummy lens through there first and just see how it runs. You can get some, some uh, bad lenses from a lab or you might have your own or just have some sing cheap single vision one and say, let me see how that's going to run on there before you, and, and then I'm not a, I'm not a guy that runs the edger, but everybody wants to do it all in one cut. Sometimes you have to maybe make two or three passes. So you got a big chunky lens, like cut it down a little bit and cut it down a little bit more, just go a little slower on it. So before you'll, you'll kind of know what your edger does. And, uh, but that's where you're going to make the most money on your progressives. Brandon, how long have you been edging? About a year and a half now. Okay. Yeah. You're ready. You're ready for sure. You know, uh, if I was, if you were my client, I'd probably have you within 30 days if you were up for it. You know, it's, it's a learning curve. Right. But if you're comfortable with the blocking and being organized, um, I would say the first step would be to call your lab that you currently do business with. And that's the other thing is when you edge, you don't fire your lab. When you edge, you just change the way you work with them. Your, 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 your buyer seller relationship changes a little bit more in your favor, a lot more in your favor. So yeah. you contact your lab and ask them for their uncut price list for all their progressives so that you understand that product mix. Um, if you're not already comfortable ordering the lenses, that'd be the first step. Yeah. I want to get Anissa on here. She's been patiently waiting. Um, Anissa, join us live here. And on mute. Hi, I wasn't expecting you to talk. I'm just writing. <laughs> Did you have a question? Oh, I no. Okay. I don't have a question now. All right. I like thank your space. You know. <laughs> I'm sorry? I like your space. Nice office. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's my home. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and uh, answer a question that came up from Jason I saw on the feed here, and that was um, how you do the AR coding with a fast grind system. And the AR coding is uh, already on the front surface of the lens. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're actually grinding the uh, backside to put yeah, your prescription in. So it's a front side AR, which uh, the performance is, is fantastic with it. Hopefully that answers your question. There is another question here um, from Jennifer Thatcher, and I think it's a great one I want to address. And what she says, do you think it's too risky to consider getting an edger now due to long lasting effects of coronavirus? Um, I'll say this, before this coronavirus thing, in office finishing new integration has been our theme. The past three to four years consistently, it's been a major part of my annual business, new integration. And these are practices that never edged before, um, made the investment, and now they're reaping the rewards. My phone has been ringing. I've been working in from my home, but I've been working because a lot of these docs who I've had conversations with are now sitting home saying, how can I give my business a, a kickstart? How can I put the rocket boosters on um, when things start opening back up again? Especially a conversation I had uh, with, a, with a doc down in Bloomington as he says, um, he thinks it might open up slowly, so he wants to reap more margins per job, which makes sense. Um, so I, I would say, I mean, unless you think that everything is never going to reopen back to where it was, um, considering an edger, if you've got the volume, you know, to justify it, which we talk about, it, it's, it's pretty much a no-brainer, especially if you're taking VSP and IMED. Yeah. I want to talk about the cost of stock lenses here. Um, Dr. Bro, we can have a, a little short conversation here. So... If you're wondering what a, a good price for a CR39 lens with AR, premium AR is, it's around five to $7. Um, sure, you can buy that same lens for $40. It's just gonna have a name brand on it. They're gonna put it in a fancy uh, sleeve with some nice graphics on it. But um, your base, most patients are gonna be fine in that CR39 lens if you know you're a plano plain to minus two. And that's, uh, majority of, of people here. Okay. Um, Dr. Grill, I know. Why don't we put it in a, in a clinical uh, setting? So patient goes out, they find a nice frame, and they're not really sure. And usually what I'll do is say, go back and find the lenses and say, look it, I've got, I've got your, let's say it's a simple single vision. 
I've got your lenses right here. You know, I can have this ready in 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Okay, so that's, I mean, you've, once you've got the lenses there, I mean, it makes it a lot harder for somebody to say, well, let me go shop around 10 different places. You know, I mean, they're more likely, so I just want them now. Right. So thing, if, you have, if you have contact lenses in stock, I mean, it, it goes a long way uh, for get, having the patient complete the sale. And it also helps with the, you know, the capture rate of second pair sales, the private paper, sure, because you, you can say, hey, I can get them to you today if, if you want to wait 20, 25 minutes. Not to make that your business. You don't want to make that necessarily your, your catch. But um, when you can under-promise and over-deliver, you know, it means something. Now, when you stock lenses, I love to see folks stocking the more premium lenses. That way, let's say your patient says, you know what, I don't want to pay the extra $75 or $100, whatever your charges are for AR coding. You can, you've got a baked in added value where you can say, well, you know, here at Real Eye Center, pretty much all our patients get AR because we're, you know, it's the best lens for you. Uh, if you don't want the AR, it's going to take a little more time. If you do want the AR, so then there's added value in the capture rate for the premium AR as well. And I think we, we just put, that's our standard, you know what I mean? Right. That's just baked in. We don't want less than the standard. So we don't There's want a, people a la carte the exam. Oh, I, I don't want you to do split lamp. I, I don't like that. You know? Oh, yeah. you want to put lens? I've got to find one. <laughs> if you want to, so there's a lot of questions about stocking lenses. I'm going to tell you what uh, Dr. Brill and I do in our practice, Brill Eye Center. Um, about three or four years ago, we, we bought about $10,000 of stock lenses. Um, I'm not saying any of you have to do that. But we brought in CR39 with AR, 167 with AR, poly, no AR. We have a um, pretty big Medicaid population in our area, so that's important. And uh, a lens called Hyvex. Um, for 10,000 bucks, you can bring all that in for, and how much do all of you spend on OCTs and Optimaps? What's an, an Optimap cost, Dr. Brill? You're on your second or third one. Yeah, well, I've got uh, one that I think was like 85000 But, you know, there's newer ones that you can spend more money on. So edging, to put it in perspective, is, is such a low-cost item. Whether you're doing some type of surfacing, edging, stock lenses, or ordering uncuts, it's very little risk and high, uh, high return. You said it earlier. You said optical opportunity, and it's one that just – when I walk into an office and I say, hey, can I have a conversation with the doctor? You know, you're not edging. Maybe you should think about it. And it's just purely a not interested. Um, sometimes they're so quick to say they're not interested because they have fear of the unknown. They don't realize how simple it is, how clean it is, how cool it is. Um, you know, and it's the, the epitome of working smarter, not harder. And I like to say that edging in office is like an ATM machine. Not that it prints money, but uh, it's, a, it's a transformation in your margins. It gives you an opportunity to say yes more often, which... In any business, you're going to sell more if you can say yes. I like hearing the edger. When I, when I hear the edger, I think, like, we're making money. Yeah. So, uh, and then when you smell those uh, funky uh, high-index lenses, you think, oh, that was a high-index lens. So you can control the smell pretty, pretty well now. But well, We have technology for that completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then when you have the uh, fast grind running with the edger, you know that it's just that much sweeter. Now, are there entry levels and high-end levels on fast grind? I know there is on, on Santinelli, but tell us about that a little bit, or is it just one model? Yeah, we, uh, we basically have one model, um, which does everything that you need it to do. So we're, okay. yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay. Um, we got a lot of questions. We're getting way behind on the uh, chats and the questions and answers, Perry. Yeah, you know, I think we need to do one thing here. We, there's two types of edgers. There's uh, dry edgers and wet edgers. Um, one of you gentlemen want to take that on? Yeah, I'll take it on. I mean, um, a dry edger is going to run a vacuum to suck what is called the swarf. It's the lens byproduct from the edging process. Um, and it would fill that swarf in a bag. The polish we've begun with a mist. Um, and typically today you'll find the dry cut machines in a, in a wholesale lab not so much a retail environment. We find the wet edgers much more commonly in a retail environment, um, but as well in a, in a lab because the polished quality coming off a wet edger is beautiful. There's no coin edge, um, and there's some different, different things that come into play between both. I would say a dry cut edger um, is going to be louder 
because you're going to hear the shop vac. Uh, you might have a little bit of dust, uh, whereas a wet cut machine will be a little quieter because just there's not a blade, but also you're not replacing blades. So the consumable cost of ownership is a little less on a wet machine, unless you're on direct water and you're paying a ton for the water through your city, county, what have you. Um, but it's really a, 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 a choice between whichever, but I would say wet cut machines are much more commonplace, especially in the retail setting. Okay. Um, all right. So I want to talk about training. How do you train a staff member with zero optical experience to get onboarded? Both you gentlemen, I know, make it super easy. I'm going to give an example of mine. Uh, Dr. Brill and I hired a, a comedian into our office. Zero optical experience. She was a yoga instructor before that. Just a good, a good lady, okay? Um, within about six hours, we had her cutting jobs. Um, all you have to do is have a little tech savviness. You got to have fingers um, and you're you're off to the races so Hugh what say someone swipes their American Express gives you uh, a check Venmo's you I don't care how they get you the money right. tell us about your your training day yeah so I actually oversee all of our customer onboarding from Cincinnati Ohio so I do it all remotely uh, via either FaceTime Skype probably Zoom now and what we do is we just grind a pair right along with them. So we use screen share technology and I'm running a job on my end. They're running a job on their end and the entire machines plug and play. So they're able to really that first day we grind a pair and then they have unlimited support uh, going forward with us and they're able to really just take, take the ball and start running with it. Uh, so you're trained within an hour on fast grind and then it's, it's off to the races. It's incredibly easy, it's all software driven. So if you're able to just follow the on-screen instructions which are detailed, then you're able to uh, produce a pair of, of lenses. And to follow on to that, because it is so easy and that we do not have to be on site, if you have a new employee, uh, we can train them right away. We also have a very comprehensive video. And as far as from a maintenance uh, standpoint, there is no preventive maintenance, which is required in most machinery. But if uh, something is to go wrong, uh, we can troubleshoot it right over the phone and we give you a lifetime warranty on all the parts of the machine. So it's built like a battleship. So we give a lifetime warranty. All right. I did want to answer a question here. Um, someone was asking, what, what happens if we have to warranty um, uncut lenses or stock lenses? So I'm going to give my experience answer. Stock lenses, you throw it in the trash, okay? For you to box up a $2 parley carbonate lens and mail it off, you're wasting your time. So throw it in the trash bin or make some artwork with it. Um, if we're talking about progressive lenses, the same thing applies as your normal lab relationships. You, uh, you send it back with the invoice or a lot of labs don't even want the lenses back today. They just trust you. Um, so warranties are the same for scratch warranties and defects. Um, Hugh, what's your warranty on lenses for stuff? Yep. So we offer a optional two year warranty uh, because we found that the majority of our customers uh, enjoy the low price point of the natural lens, if you will. And because of the quality of the machine and because of the quality of the lenses, they're just, they weren't having enough warranty claims to justify the cost. So they opt to not pay for the warranty, but it is there for those that want it and it's just five dollars a lens no matter if it's clear photochromic ar photochromic ar uh and that's a two-year warranty one-time replacement okay uh let's talk about warranty on equipment jason someone comes to you they want the rolls royce of santinelli's um do they need to be worried about something breaking or do you got their back yeah well we've got our we've got their back i mean we have special programs that come out that bundle finance incentives, warranty incentives to, of course, move the sales dial during expos and that type of thing. Um, what I like to tell my customers is 
we're, we're, I'm going to install it. I'm going to train you. And what I find is about 90% of any issues occur within the first 90 days. And it's generally an opportunity for that operator to learn, you know, possibly they put in the wrong material and clogged something up or, you know, or the tracer, they put a frame in and left the lens in it. You know, it's typically something that we can all learn from and we make, you know, we definitely, they're covered completely. Um, we have a wonderful, uh, under, you know, just, I can't tell you we're a family owned company and we've got service techs all over the country and our response is really good. We have FaceTime service. Um, we have videos on our website for our customers. I mean, and when it comes to operating an edger, operating an edger, I like to share with my clients that maybe have a little bit of fear. If they know how to use Ifinity, if they were able to learn a new EHR, <laughs> they're way ahead of the game. That's just data entry. I'm going to show them how to do data entry. And it's just then, regurgitating what's on the RX form with a touch screen into the edger. It's very simple. And the other part is like you said, they need to have hands, you know, and then it's the dexterity. So yeah, they know how to do data entry already. And they've learned that in the practice on OCTs or what have you. If they're learning all this fantastic other equipment, there's no reason why they shouldn't feel confident that they can learn that on an edger. They just might learn to, you know, scratch a lens or something where just, the handling of it will be a little bit different. Yeah. Hey, Jason, uh, while we're on the topic, you mentioned family owned. Um, the reason also we have these companies on is because you guys are independent. Um, I don't know if uh, head honcho Santanelli is on here, but um, tell us about your background. Santanelli, you guys are not owned by private equity, right? No, not at all. No, completely family you, owned. You, are you owned by private equity? No. Okay, so we have family businesses here. Dr. Dr. Brill, um, you like dealing with family-owned businesses and talking straight to the owner, right? Right. I'll have to say that uh, our, our business has been family-owned since 1923. Wow. So we've been almost 100 years in the industry, family-owned. What would you do back then in 23? Well, you know, <laughs> that was in my younger years. But yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and Santinelli back in the, I think, 1950s, uh, Joe Santinelli is the founder, the chairman. Um, Arthur LeMay is his uncle, and he, I think, had the patent or he invented the first, what we knew as the diamond bevel wheel. Um, in fact, we still have the diamond line on display sometimes at the trade shows, and it attracts a lot of attention um, from those that have been in the business a while. And Joe Santinelli, of course, took the business, and we became Santinelli International in 1973, um, and then established a relationship, you know, after that, and I think the mid to late 80s with NIDEC Japan, and that's who our manufacturer is today. Uh, we have a very long, um, amazing history with NIDEC, uh, and, and, and it's really brought us to the forefront in the industry for our category. Yeah, and I want to point out, um, I'm, I'm pretty proud of Hugh and, and John. Their product is made uh, in the USA. Tell us about that. Yeah, the, the uh, fast grind itself is completely assembled in Cincinnati, Ohio, along with our lenses. So we're doing all of that work that I mentioned that goes into blocking, taping, generating, preparing this lens for fast grind in Cincinnati, Ohio as well. And uh, to go back for a second about the warranty conversation, I spoke about the warranty on our lenses. The warranty on fast grind is actually lifetime. So all parts uh, for Fast Grind are a lifetime warranty, and we have uh, no real problems with that. We stand by it, and it's been a, a great relief to a lot of our customers that get concerned about bringing on new technology, like breaks, especially in, around the world, being in over 50 countries. Being able to offer that is fantastic. Thanks. Thanks. Um Dr. Brill, so uh, this podcast is brought to you by iRocket Consulting, as you know. Um, a lot of you are probably wondering where I got all my knowledge, and it's from uh, my father here, so thanks, Dad. Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, tell us about, you know, kind of how, how we run our practice and, you know, how I gained all my knowledge. Um, you know, you were my mentor, and how, how did I learn it all? Well, it's nice you finally said that, Perry. <laughs> Usually it's, uh, how did you learn it? I think... Um, because I worked all the time and then you heard it when I came home. So I, I think you, you just embedded it. Because when I hear you talking, I'm thinking, those are my words. But uh, just through 
School of Hard Knocks. I know I, when I started my practice, um, I was in the Army for, as an OD for four years, and I joined a pediatric eye practice, fitting contacts in the OR and doing interesting things like that. And then I thought, you know, I'm not that good of an employee. I really want to uh, start off by scrap, from scratch. Of course, it helps. Uh, sometimes it helps not to have any business experience because you, you can say that you don't really know how hard it's going to be. If you knew how hard everything was going to be, you wouldn't do half the things that you did. So, so being naive is helpful for those people who are newbies on the, on the program here. And, and the same thing is true for trying everything. My, my main role at the office is to get everybody out of their comfort zone. And if I get them out of their comfort zone, it doesn't take long before they're comfortable with whatever the training is. And that's what we do. We try to, if we, we change all the time, if I get a new employee that doesn't like change, I know that they're not gonna make it, so. But uh, we try things out. I listen to everybody. And then I, what the secret is you implement. Right. So everybody that goes to practice management lectures and say, yeah, it's nice for somebody else, but, but not for me because my practice is different. But it's really not different. It's really, uh, most practices are very, are very similar. So you have to take some calculated risks. And have I been burned? Yeah. A lot of times new, new adopters get burned, but um, I'm not promoting these these companies actually, we don't use either one of them. So, but they're so helpful and they're experts in the industry that um, I think that uh, you have to listen and they're there, they're there to help you. Uh, so they're gonna help you to win big. And this is a small risk. Back in the 1980s, um, you know, it was a bigger risk because you had to have more skill. And in the 1980s, we had to have, we had one model of so, you did need to have more skill, you know, in years past because the software, also the hardware. Um, it, I would say also that back, the precedent was purely on the private segment work, that opportunity. So buying an edger was about how many, you know, pairs of glasses are you selling? And then with the encumbrance of your VSP, your IMED managed vision care, it made less sense for practices to edge. So I, I started as a lab rep seeing less and less people with an edger in the back not using it because they couldn't with the, yeah. with the vision care. And now they're able to, that's been actually going on 10 years now, where they can edge the simple single vision and redirect the chargeback revenue um, into, their, into their practice instead of losing it on their end of the month statement. Yeah, um, you knew edging became easier when they started selling them in mauve. <laughs> when everything but, was mauve and green, I thought, oh, this is, right. they are kind of selling this based on color. And, right. um, but also now the stock lens opportunity. Yeah. It used to be, you, you probably remember Dr. Brill, where you had to literally know the matrix of lens availability for what you wanted. And it was like putting a puzzle together. Um, yeah. Now it's just fantastic. All these manufacturers have, have supported their product line with stock single vision options, major money to be saved there. Um, you know, and I always say, you're gonna save way more money if you're edging correctly then make mistakes. And Perry, aren't you putting together a little list for that too? People that want to buy uh, inventories of lenses. Yeah, so they're everyone is to do a little group here. purchasing uh, here. Gonna, with, everyone with is listening here. And, as well as lenses. So you can get somewhat of a turnkey with, um, with Perry's help. Yeah, I want to make two points here and we'll get back into the podcast. Everyone who's still on here, you obviously care somewhat about your practice, your independent optical. Um, if you're looking to buy an edger, if you're looking to buy lenses, if you're looking to surface in your office using fast grind, if we can get a core group of people here, it could be five, could be 10. These guys here are willing to negotiate on prices. Um, when Walmart buys 50,000 Samsung televisions, um, you know, they're beating Samsung up. So we're going to be, we're going to beat Jason up. We're going to beat Hugh and beat John. We're going to just negotiate down so hard. They may not realize that uh, when they go ahead and make a purchase through an alliance group or a buying group, a lot of times that buying group leans pretty heavily on the, on the manufacturer and we want you to have that benefit. So, Yeah, now I'm not part of those conversations, so I can't speak to it, but I will say that you inspired me to share this and it's in my initial a new problem, not as the, I always, I, I like approach of it's not what the edger costs 
It's what not having it is already costing you every single day with every single job. It's just such an easy solution to invest in one piece of equipment that that return on investment is just a no brainer. And that's why so often when I do my debriefing, my post installation um, conversation about why didn't I do this sooner? Uh, I've seen doctors actually upset at their labs because the lab did not coach them and encourage them to edge, which now we're seeing more and more labs actually um, advocate edging because they, you know, they, they understand if they can keep the frames out of the lab, they can keep the lenses moving a lot faster. And there, there's also less headaches in, yeah. in final quality control. So we have some labs now that actually uh, will encourage and uh, subsidize and all kinds of great stuff. Hey, hey Jason, um, a lot of you who are listening here, doctors, um, I want you to know that you have gatekeepers in your practices. And I know this sounds terrible. Um, Jason, tell us about your experiences. You've been on the road many, many years. Um, how can we get rid of the gatekeepers and get these doctors profitable? Well, it sure isn't with a box of cookies. Um, oh. You know, <laughs> I know, sorry to, sorry to bring you down. You, you know, what I find in my, my calling efforts is I get met at the front desk by somebody that's really not qualified to make the capital equipment purchase decisions. Um, and they, we're not edgy. We never want to do that again. Or we're not edging. We've never done that. We never will. And then I'll do a trade show and that doctor will come by and say, hey, I've been calling on you for years. Why aren't you edging yet? Well, why haven't, why haven't we talked? And then I'll pull out my phone and I'll say, let me show you. You know, I kind of tell on them a little bit. I, I, you know, I say, hey, I've been actually trying to get you in front of me to um, share this gospel. And then they're the ones that are so satisfied saying, wow, I wish I was doing this a long time ago. And the gatekeeper that was there is now an operator. You know, it's just not, it's not hard to edge. It's just such an easy, better business uh, solution. And, and I don't know why more practices are not edging. And that's, you know, the message that I really want to leave everybody with is, is to consider it and know what not having the edger is costing you more than worrying about how heavy Perry's going to lean on us. Yeah. Jason, tell us about your, you will actually analyze an account's lab bills and determine profitability. And then Hugh I, or John, I want you to touch on this. Will you help um, offices analyze profitability before a purchase? So go ahead, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a major component to the consultative approach. And we have tools that were brought to us uh, by uh, Jay Binkwitz and GPN. It's the Edge 2.0 platform. It's a great module for uh, making sense of the ROI. It's a spreadsheet style. It's very analytical, uh, but also going on site or having a phone conversation, even using Zoom with my prospective clients and, and going over some of their insurance jobs, just the single vision jobs and showing them uh, the missed margins in that third party segment work. Um, and definitely we go through it. And it usually doesn't take long. Uh, making sense of an edger in terms of monthly payment or just an outright purchase and when are they gonna recoup that investment? Um, it's usually a no-brainer, but what's required is an open mind and understanding that sometimes the gatekeepers are costing the doctor more money than an edger would ever cost. So let me, let me ask, there's been several questions about how many jobs do I need to make this make sense? So can you got both vendors here uh, answer that? Is there a certain benchmark you say? Uh, like, yeah, you, you're, you're muted. There how you did go. I get muted? I don't know. There you go. Am I unmuted? Yeah, yeah. you're good. Yeah, okay. Um, well, we do uh, analysis as well. And um, normally what we find, because of the huge savings that you get by producing your own lenses, stock lenses certainly will save you a lot. And if you edge, uh, you're saving on the edging from the lab. But if you're producing your own lenses, particularly progressives, the savings is 50 to $100 for each job. So we find that uh, basically if you do one progressive a day, you're paying for your fast grind system. So it's a very, very easy, quick payback just because of the huge savings by producing premium lenses in-house. Hey, John, are you able to tell us about the cost of your system? Yeah, so the, the fast grind system, complete all equipment, everything that you need, computer, uh, the, the counter that we supply, all the tooling, 
uh, gauging everything is uh, just under $30,000. Um, additionally, then you would need a lens inventory, uh, and that we configure to your needs and your budget. And that could be anywhere from two to $4,000 just to get started. From there, you just replenish as you need to. The system will keep track of what you use, so it's a very easy ordering process. And what gets ordered today gets shipped today. So, because uh, we keep a very large inventory in Cincinnati, so you replenish your stock, uh, you know, within a day or two uh, without, without question. So um, it's a very uh, low entry point. Uh, we also uh, offer leasing and um, we have a program that we are introducing the 1st of July, which will be no interest until uh, uh, 2021. But if anybody on this call is interested, we would actually uh, initiate that ahead of time. So you could get no interest, uh, no payments until January of 2021. An iEntrepreneur special. Yeah, there we go. Um, how about Jason, you, what, what does something cost? Yeah, um, well, what something would cost for an edger, I would say it depends if you're looking at brand new or maybe certified pre-owned option if you're a startup. Um, but more importantly, are you looking to do drill mounts? So I know it's in-office finishing for dummies and experts. Uh, typically, the new integration, they're not going to dive right into drill mounts. So that definitely softens the blow of the initial investment. 30 grand, 35 grand, kind of in the ballpark of super systems would get you a really nice, brand new, um, fully installed turnkey system with Santinelli. And that would be a platform that does everything but your drill mounts. That would include your digital blocker, your frame tracer, complete installation, uh, complete staff training, which we're on site with you for a day, two days, depending on what you need, but then also we're gonna be available down the road. Um, on the ROI on an edger, it's not quite as easy as John. There's a lot of different ways to look at it, to skin the cat. If you're doing a private se segment business focus, look at what you're paying right now for polycarbonate with premium AR. They're going to charge you at the lab for the poly, call it $25. They're going to charge you for the AR. They're going to charge you for mounting. They're going to charge you for, you know, a base curve recommendation or a high wrap frame. There's different, those are the charges typically you're going to see to that little lower left square on that individual invoice. And then you're paying the shipping back and forth for the frame to come. Well, when folks find out that they can buy, purchase a, a premium quality polycarbonate AR lens for anywhere from six to $35, depending on where they are at with their importance to branding, um, you know, it doesn't take long for your private jobs. In fact, with 300 single vision jobs, I could show a practice how to pay off a $30,000 edger. And that's just simple math, saving $100 per, right? Um, now on the managed vision care side of things, if let's say you're doing your VSP, your IMED, um, they've both got in-office finishing. If you're doing two to five single vision jobs a day between both of those managed vision cares, um, the average reimbursement's like $30. So just that can be the um, return on investment. It used to be that the private segment savings was the precedent. And as insurance encumbrance grew, you could use your edger less and less, right? Now they've opened up those doors to the single vision opportunity. And so now if a practice is doing a handful of single vision jobs with your VSP and your IMED, well, then the private sector savings is icing on the cake. Now, also, there's a way to look at it that when you edge, I mentioned saying yes more often. When you edge, you're going to sell more glasses. You're going to sell more second pair. You're going to sell more... Uh, eyewear to emergent and transient type uh, patients that, that, that need them quickly. Just one pair of eyewear could darn near be your monthly payment if, if that's something that in capture rate you would not have caught if you did not have your edger. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hey, um, there's a lot of people here wondering where to buy stock lenses. And again, I am trying to do a group purchasing effort. So if I go to a vendor and say, look, I want to buy 50,000 lenses, I know that sounds like a crazy amount to everybody here, but you split that among 10 or 20 offices and it's really not that much lenses. So I'm going to put my email, it's perry at irocket.com here, send the chat, message me, um, 
if you want to get a group purchase together and we'll all figure out what powers we want in materials. All right, I'm going to finish this off by getting some people on here live. So if you have a dying question, there's, there's too many in the Q&A to go through them. Why don't you ask Elaine? Elaine's on there. Yeah, we can get Elaine on. Elaine's a smart guy. Oh, Perry, can I get in there real quick? Yeah. Um, on the stock lenses, I, I, I want to communicate that they don't need to – there, there doesn't need to be the, the thinking that they need to fire their lab to get stock lenses in China. Right, right. You know, contact your current lab. You know, your lab is not going to be the spearhead for – implementing in office finishing they're typically not going to come to you and say hey you should buy an edger but and once john, you i think john it, has john has stock lenses too don't you yeah we carry <laughs> stock lenses if i can put a plug in for super optical we uh, have a wide range and uh, fantastic pricing so if anyone wants to email us be happy to get our price sheet out to them what type of lenses you carry all, all their current labs have the stock lenses too right. they're just not going to put those price lists in front of you until they know you're going to make that that uh, take your practice that direction, and then of course they're going to support you at their fullest potential. Right. Um, all right. Is Elaine, anyone anyone Elaine want to come live? Put something in the chat. Elaine has a question about polycarbonate. I can't find Elaine on here. Yeah, he's on there. And when we're referring to stock lenses, folks, we're talking about lenses prepackaged in a bag, ready to rock, ready to go. Um, not to be confused necessarily with having to inventory a bank of stock lenses. You can just stick with ordering them and getting them next day. Um, it's an exercise of inventory. That's not surfacing. You don't need to send them the frame. You just get on their internet and whatever lab if you'd like. And so it's, that's a really simple process too. I don't want folks to think that having a bank of inventory is um, vital to making this work. Do you see Elaine's question about Polly? But I'd like to, I'd like to hear the French... Canadian accent too. I uh, I promoted him to panelists. I'm waiting here. So okay. Elaine, unmute him, please. Oh, here we are. Hold on a second. He's got a crazy picture on. Okay, there. got it. Now you're hearing me. Okay. What's yeah, the ab Abbey value for polycarbonate is very very low. Not that great. And it, in Canada, it's out of favor. We go mostly with Trivex, or somebody talked about Hivex, which is 1.56. It's kind of a hybrid Trivex, but uh, or plainly 1.6. But I, I was I was curious to know why it's uh, it's so popular in the U.S. Plus, it uh, it's um, it's easy to scratch much more than any other lenses. Well, I'll have to agree with you. Uh, polycarbonate has a very low Abbey value. The optics are not that great, but it was promoted here in the uh, the states by one of the big uh, chains uh, as a you know a durable lens. And for some reason, a lot of people think they need polycarbonate. Outside of the U.S., it's hardly used at all. Well, the duty to warn thing with the children, though, right? Well, if you want want impact resistance, certainly. Primix. Yeah, well, Trivex or Poly will work work for that. But if you don't need the impact resistance, it's it's a terrible material. Optically, it's it's bad. And uh, so we, we offer a one five six as well. It's called Vision Air, and it's got a uh, Abbey value of forty three. So it's it's similar in uh, uh, optics and everything as a Trivex. Uh, it does not have the high safety value of that. But, but I agree with you on, on polycarbonate. If, if I can add something, um, we're doing very, very good. We do have an edger, and it's an IDEC one. So um, I think one of you two have, um, has an affiliation with NIDEC. Um, do you have stock lenses pre-tinted in, in the U.S. available? Because we do very, very good with that when people want to have, you know, two-for-ones or a good rebate on the second one. It's stock lenses pre-tinted, there's an AR coating on the back, and there's a scratch-resistant coating on the front. Um, great value for the money. Are you, are you speaking of something with, with, with optical value or Plano? No, no, it's not Plano. It's, it's, there's a power. Yeah. Well, I think that's a John question, because they've got an RX well, line. But it has, a, it has a tint to it? Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm not aware of that. We don't stock that, but we do sell tint units, so you can tint your own and probably save mm -hmm. even more. Don't well, the are, problem is you, when, when you tint, you couldn't tint with an AR, AR coating on the back. 
You're able to polarize. It's not polarized. It's it's unpolarized. It's just a tint, but it's a great quality tint. Uh, it's out there. I know there's a lot of Chinese manufacturer and and other manufacturer in Thailand. That's where most of these lenses are coming from that are doing it. It's just a matter of look around and you'll find them. That would be a great um, a, a great option for your clients, potential clients, because you can offer these lenses for very very little since they're pretentant in 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 uh, in in the uh, factory well thank you we'll uh, certainly look into that yeah I, I, we don't have anything like that i wish we did um we still have to tint everything and if we need ar on it it's going to take a couple of days well i can give you the uh the name of the uh distributor here in canada I'm yeah sure. that'd be fabulous that would be yeah, awesome you guys we only have green and and brown as an option and it's CR39. So they don't go in very, very high power, but still because of the fact that there's a lot of uh, plastic frames out there, you know, a lot of thickness is hidden by the, by the rim of the frame. And, and I'm sure if, if any of you would go to any Chinese sh trade show, uh, I went to three of them. They're just awesome, by the way. Raymond knows about it. Uh, you will find a manufacturer down there that, we, that does uh, pre-tinted stock lenses. Uh, even probably in, in mid or high index, I wouldn't be surprised. They almost do everything. And you could start doing business with these people. Yeah, I, think, cool. I don't think this year would be a good time to go to the Chinese trade. No, <laughs> Beijing. Uh, the, yeah. the one that I went to three times is in September in Beijing. By the way, eight buildings. I mean, uh, Vision Expo is, uh, is a small show compared to that one. <laughs> Yeah, we've uh, we've exhibited it in Shanghai, and of course we do Mido every year, and that's that's big too. Yeah, the the problem with Mido and the European one, the the, the Chinese will go there, but they don't go in in mass. But if you go to uh, to the the Chinese one, and, and Shanghai and, and Beijing are the two big ones. Uh, yes, you'll uh, they're all there basically. Cool. Hey, thanks, Elaine, for for tuning yeah. in. Someone wants to know where in Canada you are. I'm in New Brunswick, Eastern Canada. If you drive on the I-95 uh, until the very end uh, toward the, the east side, you'll hit New Brunswick. Okay. okay Perry, we're, we, thanks, Elaine. And we'll talk to you offline. So we're doing all A names. So why don't we wrap up with uh, Angie. Angie and then Adam. Yeah. We had questions way early on. So I'm sorry we couldn't get you on the line earlier. Yes. Hi, guys. I have a few questions, especially for Jason. So I purchased a Sentinelli LE700 over two years ago. It took us two years to get open. Um, and I'm about to get it set up. Do you still think it's a good Equipment, or should I consider purchasing another one? I think you should get four of them. <laughs> you should um, get a fast ground. <laughs> to answer that question, Elaine, uh, you purchased it two years ago. Um, Angie, yeah. that, that platform is still uh, very much a current product. Uh, it's been recently revamped and relaunched as the LE800. Okay. But it wouldn't be worthy of you. Um, making the switch because they're, they're pretty they're pretty close to the same and if you're entry level some of the some of the features in the le 800 you probably they won't even mean much to you maybe uh so i would say stick with the e 700 especially if you got it two years ago because you probably got a you know good deal as it was as we were you know re-releasing i purchased it from another doctor uh, oh, really? I, I would say if, if unless it's in bad shape no it's, it's in really bad shape let's trade it into something new so we can build a relationship but if if you bought it purely third party from another doctor um to let you know that's going to be something where we can help you um and come up with a program where we certify it if you need some installation assistance and, and we can get our rep involved to to uh, kind of help you take those next steps to make sure that you get it running correctly and and we're you know we can be in your corner down the road yeah, because um, when I had contacted the Sentinelli rep for LA um, for the West Coast, there's a new rep. So um, they said they were going to get back to us, but we never heard back from Sentinelli. So I don't know if you know who's the rep for the West Coast. Yeah, go ahead and email me offline and, and, and we'll make sure that you get connected. We're definitely here in your corner. Okay, thank you. Okay. And, and now Adam, one of the most famous optometrists in, in the world here. <laughs> 
I don't know about all that, but um, no. so <laughs> I, I love it's the just, podcast. It's just you, not no Daryl. Yeah, no, Dar no Daryl there, but I think he's listening though. He, he's, oh, watching okay. it, so he's, he's watching it. He's watching it. Working. He's yeah, working. we're always working. We never stop working. Working. Um, I said working. <laughs> the question I have is, like sixty percent of my my jobs are have some sort of photochromic. Like I'm I'm like ninety percent uh, anti fatigue. So my issue when I try to think about edging or any of this stuff is. I can't get a stock lens. Like every time I need to do it, it's not thing to grab off the shelf. So I currently I've only been able to save if I were to buy an edger, the edge fee. And the seven bucks does not do enough wow. to make the effort worth it. So with the current fast grind system, um, do we have access to a photochromic? What are our color options? Do we have an anti-fatigue um, lens? What are our options with that? And then I'm hearing that it's only a front side AR. My issue is that I just preach to all my patients that back side AR, we're doing better than everybody else. How do you then turn around and tell the same patient that last year I made them get a back side AR and now all of a sudden it's not that big of a deal. I'm having a few battles in my mind here. I want to get on board. Just help me get there. Yeah, so you definitely have the lens availability that you were wondering about. So we've got a photochromic called Conversion. It's available in gray and brown right now. Uh, and then obviously you've got, as I mentioned earlier, uh, various polarized options with, with different mirror coats uh, for the other sun market that, that you may have. Uh, it's available in single vision, bifocal, and progressive. So you're gonna cover all of your bases there. Uh, as far as the AR, uh, it may be worth, you know, looking at what the AR was before versus the AR that's on the front side of a fast grind lens. You know, you've got a really high quality, super hydrophobic AR uh, that we've got customers, you know, all over the world that swear by it. Uh, and if it's something that, like you said, you're, you're trying to wrap your, your, your brain around, we can always send out a sample for, for you to validate in person. You know, you don't have to jump in with both feet and, and hope that it works. We want to make sure that it's a comfortable transition, but you're going to be way ahead uh, cost of goods wise being able to do that work in house. Is there an anti-fatigue lens? As well, I heard photochromic and line bifocal, but is there an anti-fatigue lens in the fast grind system? Are, are you looking for like a blue light lens or? The anti-fatigue has have like a 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 in the ad for my computer users um, and stuff like that. Do y'all right, have so anything like that? Right, right now, we're going to start with a one ad. Uh, it's, it's something one. that we're, we're looking at, but we're right now, all of our multifocals start at a one and is there a significant, I, I can see the significant cost savings in a progressive that you pay $200 for, but is there a significant cost savings in a photochromic from you guys that we're getting lower, it's less meat there to, to get a cost savings? How is that with your single vision uh, with the photochromic? Right. So if, if you're looking at a, a photochromic AR, it's going to be uh, 16 or uh, twenty six ninety eight per pair for for fast grind, but you also have the service aspect of it as well, where you're able to, as you were saying before, you can't grab it off of the shelf right now. But if you're you know doing fast grind and edging in house, you are able to grab it off the shelf. So, so you're saying your single vision photochromic is is how much? Photochromic AR is twenty six ninety eight per pair for two, and then I just have to then. I'm grinding. I'm doing the, the surfacing with the fast grind. Yes. If the, no, we, the we also offer stock lenses too in a photochromic right. AR. So, so you can get a photochromic. How much is the photochromic AR stock lens? Um, do you have that, Hugh? It's I do. It's uh, fourteen ninety eight per pair. Okay, and then you just take that, and then you're just taking it to the Santinelli. Yeah, you go straight to the yeah straight to the Santinelli there. Yeah, do you have a Santinelli, Adam? No, I do not. That's been my 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 help. My holdup has been the photochromic anti fatigue portion of it. So if you can help me figure out a way to solve that answer, yeah, well, fine, absolutely. That's what we're here for. Um, I do have a question that I wanted to kind of bring in Dr. Brill and maybe Perry. Okay. And one of my questions, Adam, is 
in my calling efforts, it's, it's, I see a lot of different trends through my dialogue with my customers. And I see some practices that like you do pretty much all their single vision in probably like an Aizen. Is that what you're using? Yeah. I was okay. trying to leave names out of it, but go ahead. Um, they weren't paying me, so I was leaving names out, but okay, go ahead. Sure. Um, the anti-fatigue lens, I, I, I see practices that use that as a primary staple. And my question is, do you think you might be using that more often than you really need to? Dr. Brill, do you have any input on that? Yeah, I, I like uh, yeah. having, you know, we'll call it a relaxed lens or just whatever the name is on it. I, I, we try to be um, non-branded on there. We're, uh, so uh, the brand should be the Ramsey brand. Unless you work, nice. un, unless Essilor, unless your whole office is an Essilor office where they rebrand the <laughs> whole office. <laughs> but it's, we, we like to think it's the Brill, the Brill Eye brand. Okay, well, so it shouldn't matter to the patient. But, but I, I get your point, say, though. I would but say, you, Adam, is not, that you have to be thinking, is this 80 or 90 percent of your lenses? Or are you talking about, yeah, I mean, I, you know, 15%, 10%, 20%. No, I was getting a single vision. That was my thing. I knew I was this, the cost savings of off the shelf has always been, hey, single vision, you know, grabbing a stock lens, you can get that, that savings immediately. But I didn't realize that you can get a stock um, a photochromic yeah. lens yeah. off the shelf. So that is a, a very big savings. And, and that, always, that photochromic was really photochromic like AR. Or an, you can always order an Eisen or, or Eisen. I think in old days, you can always order an Eisen or Relax or whatever brand name they want to put on it. And you say, look, at that's one I'm going to have to order. I'm going to uh, charge you more for that. And that would be called an uncut, not a stock. Yeah, it's an uncut. Um, my question, I guess, really was, was why do I see so many, I, I see randomly a doctor that uses primarily an anti-fatigue lens. And I, and I think, why are you using it so often instead of taking advantage of a stock lens opportunity? So, different so I, had a patient, I had a patient today, so I'm in the office and a patient comes in and I saw him because he's getting headaches on the computer. He broke his glasses, can't see, comes in and that's the main thing he wants. He said, I want a blue light blocking lens. If that's different. Asking for it by name and they say they're coming in and that it's being, it's known in my area that people are asking for blue light blocking lenses. So patients are coming in and actually asking for it now well so it isn't so much the doctors are selling it and putting it on but now i have patients come in and they're asking me if i don't even prescribe it or offer it to them they're looking at me like i'm crazy so uh, yeah that's why i wanted to clarify earlier because we we have the blue shield line so we have a blue shield line that is the blue light lens uh with and without ar for single vision with ar for progressive the technology's in the lens it's incredibly it's you know obviously becoming more and more popular but that's not going to have the the small bump that 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 you were talking about because we find that it's not it's not important that what what they're looking for is the relief which you get in the technology of the blue shield aspect of it right uh, okay i'm going to give my feedback um, oh yeah yeah jump in here Perry. first of all um photochromic yeah, they come in stock lenses, cost anywhere from, you know, I'm just talking CR39, 15 bucks to 40 bucks, depends on brand versus non-branded lenses. And then um, as far as anti-fatigue or boost or relax or whatever you want to call it, I think they're, I think they're over-prescribed in the industry. I'm just one opinion. I'm 28 years old. I've worn them. I, I, I notice zero difference. I'm on the computer all damn day. Um, and I understand, Dr. Ramsey, like the patients come in. And they've already, wherever they heard that information, they're sold on it. And you just want to provide them with a product. Obviously, it's not going to be negative to them. What I do worry about is, you know, anyone who's like 20 to 35, we have accommodative, um, we're not, we don't have accommodative issues. We can see. And then a lot of it might just be dry eye. Maybe we're misdiagnosing this ability of headaches to dry eye or something else. Uh, Dr. Brill could probably chime in on that. And third, blue light, we need blue light to stay awake. Um, if you read the studies on it, if you block all the blue light all day long, you'll become drowsy. So I'm not a big proponent of blue light. We, we do offer it, um, but there's a lot of phony product out there. There's good products and bad products. But I did like you touching on the overprescribed, and that was really the root of my question is, is I feel that because if you're edging, 
and you're selling all your single vision as this enhanced single vision product like we talked about, you're not able to order those a lens in a bag. You get them next day. It becomes an exercise of surfacing. Um, I also want to add, um, as far as digital single vision goes, look, if you're a minus one, minus two, minus three, no one's going to know if it's a digital lens or not. You're not going to get that extra super crisp acuity. Um, I'm a minus six, and I, I'm wearing stock lenses. I wear them all dang day. Um, but I think really about – the optician in fitting the lenses. So if this is a 48 eye size, I'm cutting all that distortion out on the stock lens. Um, but Dr. Bro, what do you think about uh, blue light and, and boost lenses? Are we over prescribing that stuff or, or doing it just right? Well, the blue lights, there's still controversy about it. I, I, I do prescribe it for patients who are on a computer lot. And in Kansas City, we have a lot of IT type companies, Hallmark, um, American Century, sprint so we have a lot of those folks and uh, i don't you know i mean i have to be honest about it so uh i will ask them and i will test them behind the foropter i don't push it if they don't really need it so, yes. um, so i might i might offer it and they may or may not get it but um on the blue light if you want to be really scientific about it there are some experts and you really have to research it i, I don't feel right telling a 20 year old that to get blue, a blue light blocking lens so they can avoid having macular degeneration when they're 80. I mean, I feel that's that's a little strange. Yeah. So, um, but if it makes it more comfortable, that's just fine. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think if you're known as the blue light uh, relax lens, boost, near boost lens, I won't make the name brands, but if you're known as that guy, then maybe that's what you have to hang your hat on that. You're that guy. So if you have an edger and a fast grind or similar uh, equipment, then you're going to have to realize those are ones you're going to have to pay more for because you pushed it. Hopefully you charge enough for it. That was my point. Adam, is that, is that helpful as far as like, I mean, there definitely sounds like you are looking to produce the lenses in house or be able to grab them off the shelf. And it sounds like there's options. No, it, it, it is helpful. My audition here was asking just to find out the, the range. Just wanted to make sure that there wasn't like a you go and do plus or minus six. Just make sure that there was if, if it's open to enough people, the system sounds uh, great, and being able to do it in house and the surfacing has always been the drawback to the edging uh, process or doing in office finishing is that so much of the product had to be. Had to yeah, exactly. It, it can definitely help push over. You know, you know, push it right over that hurdle uh to be able to justify the whole thing yeah I, I i know for a lot of people that that's always the issue if you're if you're busy enough it makes sense but not all offices are busy enough to do the math and say hey can we do this in office is there enough prescription types or patient populations that we can get this in if you have issues with insurance you have issues with you know around here vsp choice I mean, you have no choice so you know there's certain things where you have where you can do it. So you're looking at this little small pocket of patients types that is eligible for this, but uh, being able to finish in office uh, and surface in office uh, is the holy grail. If we could get the price right, you can get it right. It is, it is what we all want to do. We all know we need to do it. Uh, this system seems like it's a, a really good option. Yeah, so Adam, and that's what we can take offline, more. but we, we can look at like what you've been doing. And, and like we said earlier, J Jason's uh, got a platform, as, as do we, of uh, to help look back over what you've been doing and say, okay, if you had everything implemented and you just take your last two months or last month, or whatever, and it's uh, 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 in there. What was that? So, all right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, I'll share this with you before you go. One of the first things that will happen when you get familiarized with edging in office is your, your understanding of product mix is going to just explode. When you start seeing what you can get in terms of lens options for what money, whether it be stock lenses, uncuts, working differently with your lab, and I, I say working differently with them because you will, but you'll still work with your lab reps. They're going to help you, um, but you just might get... Um, price lists that are a little bit unfamiliar to you because they're probably not giving you stock lens pricing right now, Dr. Ramsey. They're not putting that carrot in no. front of you. You have to, I don't know if you heard that, but there's different price lists. 
once they know you have an edger, it's like, um, we're going to have to give them, you, he's going to ask us, you're going to say, I want the uncut price list. I want the stock lens price list. Don't give me the, the $7 routine. I'm not doing that. Yeah, okay. I think I want to. And I would say one more, I would say one more thing is in, in my youth, I would think about all the exceptions all the time. And I still kind of do. Uh, I'm positive, but I'm thinking what could go wrong? Because I epitomize Murphy's Law and a lot of these things. So I would say, don't worry about the, the, the exceptions. Let's say, we'll just call it 20%. Think about the 80%. And that 80%, you're, you're going to be uh, just as popular as you are for all those specialty lenses. Man, 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 this guy, he can get, he get that thing out right away. I had to, even if I went somewhere else or online, he couldn't get out the same day. And a lot of the big box stores now have given up on one hour uh, edging. So, so think about how it works every day and think about you're with that patient or your optician is, and they say, man, I, I need lenses. I'm going out of town. I need them today. And you're like, we'll have them ready by 10, you know, it's eight o'clock in the morning. You're so think about that, that pleasure of you doing that. And don't worry about the exceptions. There's always going to be exceptions there. And I mean, you can't think of everything. So I want to add, like you said, Dr. Brill, sometimes when we edge lenses, we don't make any money. But where we do make the money is loyalty. You got everyone wants two day Amazon Prime. They want two day Ramsey Prime, two day Brill Prime. And we can do that. So even if you have to order a boost lens, you get that to your door next day. And, it, and in 20, 48 hours, you're going to notify that patient via text message. This is a real life scenario. And they're going to say, uh, was that a mistake that you texted me my glasses are ready? And you're going to say, no, they're ready. Yeah. Because I have some opticians, you know, we get the jobs done in like one hour and like, well, should we wait? Because people are going to be really suspicious if we tell them it's done so soon. I'm thinking, no, just call them. It'll That's up the whole things, service level. That's one of the things I like to, to, to share with my clients as icing on the cake is, once your staff is behind the new way of doing business, ordering lenses in instead of sending frames out and being inefficient, um, they get to be the hero more often. And they get to deal with these patients who possibly last year when they were in to see you were complaining the job isn't there yet. And now they're ready already. And that's that patient that they may have been afraid to see that day because they know about last year. Um, this, year this year, it's a different type of situation. And, and um, I think that's important to control the accountability and owning your own business and eliminating middleman profits and being a better service agent to your patients, if it's possible, I mean, why not? And, and what Fast Grind does, ju just for anyone that's in the audience, um, either tuned in later or, or not familiar, is Fast Grind takes that and opens up the multifocal market because everything that an edger gives you uh, being able to use stock lenses or being able to um, order an uncut from a lab, you're still uh, ordering out the multifocal. Fast Grind allows you to make that multifocal in-house. So any of the clientele that needs that faster service or that um, enhanced customer experience, you're able to give that to the multifocal cohort as well, not just the single vision. Yeah, thanks, Hugh. Um, Josh Hackney is one of your, your users, uh, Fast Grind folks, and he just made one of the best comments I've seen all day. When you edge in-house, what you're doing is you're saving time and money because you're not paying an employee to be calling the lab, tracking the product, where the hell is the product? Oh, the UPS man lost it. You can focus on the person in front of you, and that's the patient who needs help. You want to bring Josh? I, just, I think Josh has Sentinelli and Fast Grind, doesn't he? Yeah, we can see if he wants to come on. See if he you know, that's, a great, that's a great thing to mention because there's so many times where the optician is put in an uncomfortable situation to become a psychologist and talk yeah. this patient off the ledge who is going to get on Yelp and they're going to talk all kinds of smack about your practice because the job's not there yet and it was promised yesterday and it's not there today. Uh, the control factor is one that is just a, 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 an expected benefit uh, coinciding perfectly with the profits. Plus you're going to sell more eyewear, which is revenue. If you're selling more often, making more when you do and pleasing more patients every single time you do. Um, it's crazy not to it's at least, at least know what you're missing. I'm going to, I'm going to say one thing. So we don't do this as a regular basis, but for some patients where they really were indecisive on what they wanted, uh, Perry and I said, let's make them up in both. Let's make up both pairs. 
And I said, taking a risk. But when your cost is minimal, you could do a super service like that. You can say, I'm just going to make them up, surprise them at the dispensing and say, you know, I made up both of them. You couldn't decide. And, uh, and you know, maybe you give them a break on the, on the second pair. And in every case, they've accepted it and thought, that was fantastic, you know? So, um, so I, I would say you, can, you could be super nice to people when you have uh, some margin on it. You know, when, when somebody wants something uh, extra done or super picky and you, you've, you've barely made any money on it, it's really hard to be really nice. Yeah. Hey, Josh, um, you're walking around, but you are customers are both companies. And again, um, neither of these companies paid to be on here. We just had to choose somebody in the industry who's not owned by Big Optical to be on here. So tell us about your experience. And I, I got to say, I don't know Josh personally, just through the groups. Um, if, if you want to unmute yourself, Josh, he you worked in private practice for a long time. He's an optician. He just opened up his own independent location. Well, let uh, him say it. Yeah. Okay, Josh, your video just went out. Oops, it's gone. Oh, no, there he is. Uh, can you put him back on as a panelist? I don't know if he was hearing us. There he is. Okay, you Josh, you have the floor. Can't hear you. You can't hear him. Can you unmute him or so you have to do it? Uh, yeah. he's, he's unmuted. Yeah, he's while, unmuted. You're, while you're figuring Josh out, I see a question here from Katie Rich uh, saying, I would love a newbie course. Uh, we actually, we have tools available via John Seegers and Laramie K Optical. Optician Works. John has done a phenomenal job putting together newbie course type training available on YouTube. We have them available through Santinelli. Katie, you can email me if you'd like. Um, you know, go on YouTube and type in Optician Works, plural, uh, and you'll see a lot of these different videos walking you through the ex it, entire process from start to finish. And that would be the great first step for you. Um, I'm going to pitch myself here. I, I have a whole YouTube, uh, about 20 minute YouTube video about how to buy stock lenses. Um, if anyone wants to watch the video, um, I'm going to just give you my phone number here. It's the one everyone's been texting to say, let me get the link to the video and I'll send you that link. Oh, there's Josh. Okay, Josh, can you hear? Yeah, he, he can hear us, but can't hear. Do you have a speaker on your computer or your phone there? He's on dial up. Yes. Oh, he's on. Oh, okay. No. Nah. That's okay. Um, cool. Well, we're going to get some final remarks here. So um, I want to thank the 91 people that are still on. So that's fabulous. Don't you have anything better to do? We, we could, yeah. <laughs> like there's, there's, there's nothing better than saving money. We could talk about this stuff all day, but I think, Perry, we should start wrapping it up here. Oh, no, I'm ready for a beer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jason, give us some final remarks. Uh, get us motivated. Get us yeah, you know, making money. I'll tell you, if you're not edging, you should at least know what you're missing. Uh, and if you're not edging, you definitely have a great opportunity to take your practice to a phenomenal next level in margins, patient service, competitive posturing, community outreach, uh, with a simple purchase of a piece of equipment that's going to mean a lot to your practice. Um, and I don't know, I just don't know why more practices aren't edging and why not? It's, it's, it's simple, it's clean, you've got the products to support your uh, new direction. And I, I, I hopefully I hit some, some uh, nails on the head today to get some, you know, inspire some interest. I, I just think it's better business um, and you're missing a great, a great opportunity to, to make more from less. Great. John, uh, take us over. Yeah, well, I want to thank everybody, especially the hangers on here. There's, I guess, 83 people still out there. Um, those of you that are edging, your next step should be fast grind to be able to do all of your jobs in-house and to offer exceptional service to your patients. I mean, today, everyone is expecting it more than ever. Uh, be the Amazon of eye care. Uh, for those of you that are looking to uh, get into lab work for the first time, 
Uh, you need to look at doing both right from the get-go. Some people think, oh, I'll start with edging and then put in servicing. But if you're going to do it, you need to do it all at once and educate your patients to the type of service that, that you can give them with all types of lenses, not just single vision. So um, if anyone wants to contact us offline, we have ways to show you the ROIs. We can look at your individual uh, practices and Happy to help you through the process. Thank you all for listening. And what better time to do that than now when we're all inside, right? Yeah. Exactly. We can do all this remotely. Right. Um, Hugh. Well, I, I think John and Jason uh, covered just about all of it. Um, I would, do want to say thanks to uh, Perry and Dr. Brill for hosting this. I, I think it's definitely been a great uh, back and forth conversation. And I think we've been able to answer a lot of the Q&A questions and questions that have come up in the chat. Obviously, if we didn't get to your question and we missed it, or if you just feel more comfortable asking offline, uh, you can reach out to us and we'll get you taken care of. But thanks everybody for coming out. Um, Dr. Brill, give us some wisdom. 40, 40 years or more of practice. 42. 42. 42. I'm a lifetime AOA member now. So, um, yeah, I, I would say that there's always going to be some reason you don't do something from uh, getting married to having kids to starting a practice to, you know, some people are, hate it, but they've been in commercial practice their whole practice time. And they've done okay money wise, but they're a drone and um, you could be your, in your own practice and be a drone. So there, there's never the best time. And sometimes you have to take some risks. These are calculated risks. These are, it's a pretty easy decision. I think most of the companies have some risk reversal if there's a time period where you could try it out. I don't know if you guys do, but you know, I, I think that it's a, a, it's a pretty easy decision and uh, it's one that goes right to the bottom line. So you're going to be every month when you save several thousand dollars on your lab bill, you're gonna be like, that's the best thing I ever did. So, and you're in control. So uh, optometrists tend to be introverted uh, and like to do things by the numbers, want studies about it and everything. But sometimes you have to go with your gut and this is a pretty easy decision. So there's a number of reputable companies in, in the country uh, we've got two of them here that are independent, uh, and they're there. They're, they have your back. They're there, um, sticking their neck out every day. And you could just tell by how they answer questions. They're experts at this stuff. So um, it's not like they just started. But I would act. Right. Smart. Absolutely. And I'm going to give one last suggestion here. I know many of us are on managed care. It's not a barrier to doing any of this. Yes. Uh, there's crooked rules out there that dictate we have to send jobs to labs, but we all sell second pairs. We all have cash jobs. So there really is no excuse to, to not act. Um, and for 10 or 20 bucks a day, you can finance any of these machines, any of them, or, or lease them. So the, you have the money. Now is the time to spend it. Um, and if you're complaining about not making money in, in practice, just realize it's because you don't have the tool sets. Uh, and with that, um, many of you are going to get a survey after this. Just fill it out. And I got like a zillion text messages that we're all going to get to. And um, I'm sure all of us have emails by now. Yeah. So I wish you all a, a good evening and um, take lots of walks. There's not. <laughs> hey, thanks, I entrepreneur. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, share this with all your colleagues. Uh, the recording will be emailed out. So. Great. All right. Take care, guys. Goodbye. We'll see you Thursday. Bye. Bye.